Is bloggers tax in the Philippines fake news? I made a video in good faith about how all bloggers need to register and how they would also need to pay income taxes if they meet the threshold, which is 250,000 pesos a year. It was a video made as a public service announcement, and I showed the source document. I even made mention in the video, don't attack the messenger. I was directed to a live stream by a viewer. That live stream is now a video called, New Blogger Tax is Fake News. The video was made by a foreigner who now lives in the Philippines and whose channel is about his farm life in the Philippines and seems to be a response. I want to quote something he said in his live stream when he advised it's only about the government wanting bad taxes and has nothing to do with income tax. He stressed in his live stream that there is no income tax for bloggers in the Philippines. He said, I quote, How this idiot got this so screwed up, that's what happens when have half wits put out misinformation and is soaked up by other half wits that don't do the research. It's fake news. I don't know how else to say it. I am really annoyed that because of his false claim that there is no income tax for bloggers in the Philippines, a few people are questioning my video when I showed the tax memorandum. So I am now forced to do a follow-up to address the issue raised in the video, New Blogger Tax is Fake News. I have been in close contact with a very good friend of mine whose foundation degree for her law degree was accountancy and she was a practicing CPA prior to law school. She is now a tax lawyer and a CPA based in Cebu City, and she handles all my tax affairs. We built a good friendship when we studied law together and got our law degrees together, but unlike her, my foundation degree was political science, not accountancy, so I always heed her counsel on such matters. I do not claim to be an expert on tax law. It's not my field of interest. But my friend, a CPA lawyer, clearly is an expert. I, however, already knew the information my video contained was correct, but for the doubters who would rather listen to a big farmer, understand I say it without reservation. When he advised, it's only about the government wanting bad taxes and has nothing to do with the income tax, he is wrong. When he stressed in his live stream that there is no income tax for bloggers in the Philippines, he is wrong. And if he thinks the law does not apply to him and his channel, he is wrong. I listened to more of the live stream where he was reading out people's comments when someone pointed out there was a tax memorandum 06-2020, which is the tax memorandum I featured on my channel. He said and I quote All you have to do is all you have to do it read the article about the Jupiter director of the BIR. I haven't seen any kind of memorandum. Who cares? Earlier he read out the title of an article BIR to tax only major online sellers, which appears to be his source of information for his live stream New Blogger Tax is fake news. BIR to tax only major online sellers, I googled the article to discover it is an article dated June 18, 2020 from the Philstar Global. After he read the title, he read out a few first few sentences which I also read to be balanced. It says, the Bureau of Internal Revenue has clarified that it is not going after small online businesses but is instead looking to tax big online shopping platforms and digital services. During the online logging handout briefing yesterday, BIR Deputy Commissioner Arnel Gubalia said the Bureau ordered online sellers to register simply to determine the total population of individuals and enterprises earning money through digital platforms. Gubalia explained that the BIR's order does not aim to increase the tax burden of small players. 
but rather to get large online businesses such as Lazada, Netflix, and Google into the country's tax net. So, a video lasting over an hour claiming that there is no income tax for bloggers is not based on anything other than him reading a few sentences of an article published on June 18, 2020 from the Philstar Global where the BIR Com Deputy Commissioner Arnel Gubalia speaking at the Lagging Handa briefing on Wednesday, June 17, 2020 was quoted. He also read, Gubalia, he, he, Gubalia reiterated that online sellers whose earnings do not exceed 250,000 pesos annually are not required to pay income tax. The article he quoted as his source does not say there is no income tax for bloggers. The article he quoted as his source only confirms no tax is paid on annual earnings under 250,000 pesos. The article he quoted as a source also confirms the BIR's Revenue Memorandum Circular 60-2020, notifies that those who do business through digital platforms are to register with a tax agency on or before July 31, 2020. A wise person should base their observation on the black and white text of the memorandum, not a journalist's interpretation of a meeting. The article that he quoted as a source also confirms the BIR encouraged online businesses to declare and pay the corresponding taxes on past transactions without penalty if the declaration and payment are made on or before July 31, 2020. The article he quoted as a source also confirmed the agency warned that all individuals or corporations found doing business without complying with the requirement should be met with applicable penalties under the law. I continued looking and I came across a later article on Inquirer.net dated June 20, 2020. This was titled Taxman Eyes Blogger YouTubers. I find it hard to believe anyone could misinterpret such title. On reading this article, it states that Taxman comment for video bloggers, influencers, YouTubers, and others earning money from digital ads on their platforms. I noticed the date of this article which states, I quote, The BIR on Friday told lawmakers that online bloggers and filmmakers earning from advertising gain from their online channels were covered by a memorandum requiring digital earnings to register so taxes could be collected from them. At a hearing of the House Ways and Means Panel, Representative Franz Castro asked the BIR, and I quote, Is it true that bloggers, filmmakers, and those earning from digital ads are also covered by this memorandum? Representative Franz Castro was referring to the Revenue Memorandum Circular 60 2020 that gave notice to all e-commerce merchants to get registered, keep accounting records, file their tax return, and pay their taxes on time. BIR Deputy Commissioner Arnel Gobalia replied to the representative of the House, and I quote, Yes, bloggers and others earning digital ads are also required to register their business. Anyone researching the subject will understand the memorandum applies to e-commerce platform providers such as Shopee and Lazada, internet retailers of consumer goods, providers of digital membership subscription services, and other digital transactions through the use of electronic platforms and media, but it also applies to online bloggers and filmmakers earning advertising income, and even ride-hailing services for food, transport, delivery, or merchandise. I believe any blogger doing a live stream on such an important subject and advising the subject 
should have at least read the minimum BIR memorandum 60 2020 prior to doing a live stream. But instead, he relied on his source article was published on June 18 concerning a meeting on Wednesday, June 17. The subsequent article confirming online bloggers and filmmakers earning advertising income have to register and pay taxes came from a meeting two days later in front of lawmakers on June 19. Practice what you preach. Do your research rather than attack and annoy me and other bloggers that are doing their research. He also read out a comment from a viewer saying, I have seen a blogger go to the office there in Naga and came with a lot of papers. His response was, he is an idiot then, and he laughed, and then he said, there is no income tax for bloggers in the Philippines. I saw another article from the Manila Bulletin dated June 18, 2020, which appears to have covered, covered that June 17 meeting. This reporter titled the article differently than his source article. The title was, Bloggers, Filmmakers, Earning from Digital Ads Required to Register BIR. The article read, The Bureau of Internal Revenue has released the list on, of online merchants required to register with the agency as it ordered its more than 120 revenue district officers nationwide to release the Certificate of Registration of Digital Sellers of Goods and Services in a day or two upon the submission of the application. The BIR estimated 6 million big, medium, and minimal digital merchants operating in the country. That seems a lot more than Google, Netflix, and Lazada. But to save any confusion, the article stated that BIR Deputy Commissioner for Operations Arnel Gobalia identify the following digital merchants which are required to register. 1. E-commerce platform providers. 2. Internet retailers of consumer goods. 3. Digital services, membership and subscription. 4. Digital transaction through the use of electronic platforms and media. 5. Online blogging filmmakers earning from advertising gain from their online channels. 6. Ride hailing services for food, transportation, delivery, or merchandise. So, the BIR Deputy Commissioner for Operation Arnel Gubalia is actually saying online blogging filmmakers earning from advertising gain from their online channels have to register, not just sellers. But Gubalia clarified that those earning more than 250000 annually will be required to pay income tax. But since the maker of the video, New Blogger Tax Fake News, once made a video saying how much he earns and showed his video screen for a 28-day period where he earned over 50% of the threshold in one month, it will be safe to assume that he earns over 250,000 pesos annually, making him tax, making it tax payable. I disagree with his claim if it is fake news, and I disagree with his claim that there is no income tax for bloggers in the Philippines. I need to pay my taxes, and I have no doubt he will understand he will need to pay his, especially remembering what was contained in the article he quoted as a source. The agency warned that all individuals or corporation found doing business without complying with the requirements will be met with applicable penalties under the law. It is well known the BIR have police powers and their own courts paying informants rewards for reporting people evading tax. It is also well known that his income from YouTube supplement his farm business where he was going to show everyone how to farm for profit. Since it is clear he wants to attack me and this is not the first time, he once demanded I apologize when I called him out about his claim that any foreigner could live here on 15,000 pesos a month. 
a statement he made after only living in the Philippines for a couple of months. He was wrong then about that, and he, was, he is wrong now about this. He even advised foreigners that he owned 40% of the land and the businesses, yet a DTI check show both businesses are solely owned by his wife, which raises another issue. Most foreigners knew it is prohibited to buy land in the Philippines by the Constitution of the Philippines. But a few know that the same Constitution also prohibits foreign investment in fishing. In the same video where he mentioned his competition in the fingerling business was trying to push him out, his competition only has to complain that a foreigner is participating in the management of fish pens to the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources. If he claims it's his wife's business, under the anti dummy law, a person who has in her name or under her control a business, the exercise or enjoyment which is expressly reserved by law to Philippine citizens shall not permit or allow any foreigner to intervene in the management, operation, administration, or control of such business, whether as an officer, employee, or laborer, with or without remuneration. I don't think it can be any clearer. Foreigners should not invest in or be involved or intervene in the management, operation, or administration of businesses in the utilization of marine resources in archipelagic water, territorial sea, and the exclusive economic zone as well as small-scale utilization of natural resources like in rivers, lakes, lakes, bays, lagoons, even if such business is owned by their Filipino spouse. Obviously, there will be people, both foreigners and their spouses, that ignore the laws and think such laws do not apply to them. The same people so often start to think no laws apply to them, now including tax laws. Those people who think the laws don't apply or want to get away with it should not make a video giving out false claim, no income tax for bloggers in the Philippines, and then titling the video, new, new blogger tax is fake news. It attracts people's attention and people who actually, actually know better don't like being called half-wits. I have read in the comments, someone had downloaded it and will be showing the video to the BIR. The same person had previously inquired on the content of my video in the BIR and came back and left a comment on my channel that I was right. If you want to know how to raise thin pigs, then I suggest you seek his counsel and advice. But when it comes to grown up things like laws in the Philippines, Choose your sources wisely. Thankfully, many viewers are starting to now understand that. I'll be doing a follow-up video about paying my obligation to the government for my channel. All taxpayers should insist that others do the same.